Just like a tree prefers to stay still despite the wind, Harry seems to be constantly in the spotlight for the wrong reasons, despite wanting peace. It's not just the folks in the UK who are upset with him. Americans are also pretty annoyed. At a recent awards ceremony, it seemed like Harry was sporting a military medal, which really didn't sit well with many people. Sure, make sure to watch the video all the way through to catch every detail. Hello friends, welcome back to the King YouTube channel. Prince Harry recently stirred controversy by wearing his military medals during a video appearance at an awards ceremony. Despite relinquishing his honorary military titles in 2020, he chose to display his Operational Service Medal for Afghanistan, among others. This decision sparked disapproval from some royal fans on social media, who found his actions inappropriate and criticized him for merely showing participation medals. However, others defended Harry, pointing out that his medals were earned for notable occasions such as the late Queen's Jubilees and his service in the army. In the video, Harry commended as Combat Medic Sergeant First Class Elizabeth Marks, the recipient of the Soldier of the Year Award, for her bravery, resilience, and contributions to the service community. The event was organized by Military Times, an independent news outlet that honors outstanding military members from various service branches. So let's talk a bit about Harry's speech. It really missed the mark for me. Honestly, he doesn't seem to be the best at public speaking. It's tough to watch because he appears so nervous, often trailing off at the end of his sentences. It's hard not to focus on how he struggles to get the words out. It all felt a bit odd. You'd think that someone from the royal family would be a polished speaker, given their lifelong practice, but Harry looked completely out of his element and really uncomfortable. Despite all the training he supposedly received, it just hasn't paid off, and I was even surprised he didn't wear his Living Legends of Aviation medal, which he usually prizes, and to add, of all the medals he wore, only one was actually for military service. The others were Jubilee medals, and considering over 400,000 of each were given to service personnel, they don't really set Harry apart as anything unique. Did you know that when Harry served in the military, he was nicknamed the boy in the back because he was the spare and was kept out of harm's way? As a result, he rarely faced real danger, yet he received medals for bravery. Understandably, this makes many of his fellow servicemen who actually encountered peril feel uneasy. It seems quite inappropriate for Harry to sport these medals, especially when most of them are undeserved. It's particularly out of place that he showed up to present a medal to a genuine war hero, draped in his own participation medals. Honestly, someone else should have been chosen for that honor. Despite his efforts, Harry doesn't quite hit the mark of a hero. To think, three of his four medals were just for being around during the last three Jubilees. These aren't even military honors. It really wasn't fitting for Harry to wear them to such an occasion. Harry really had no business wearing those medals, especially not in the U.S. where he wasn't acting under any official U.K. government capacity. The fact is, he was on private grounds, not on duty for the U.K. or the Crown. If it had been an official function assigned by the U.K. government or the Crown, then maybe it would be justifiable. But that wasn't the situation. It seems like he wore them just to boost his own significance, which is misleading. Moreover, it's inappropriate for a foreign prince no longer an active member of his own armed forces, to wear military medals on a soil under these circumstances, some might even argue it's a bit presumptuous. Honestly, actions like these could warrant questioning his stay in the U.S. It's baffling why he still carries these medals that in some views he didn't truly earn. It appears he was more involved in simulation than real action, which hardly justifies such honors. The U.K. might even consider revoking these decorations. Standing there adorned with medals, trying to look important, it's something he ought to be embarrassed about. I can't believe how full of himself he acts, especially when he really doesn't deserve it. They were supposed to honor a true soldier, but it turned into a mess. The video quality was awful, all blurry, and there's Harry just standing there on the porch. And guess what? He's showing off his Afghanistan medal along with three fake ones, like he's trying to impress someone. And you know what's even worse? An American woman who actually served her country is receiving the award, and who gives it to her? It's a foreign prince, and not even a respected one. It's just plain rude, if you ask me. I'm not the only one who's upset about Harry's behavior. I mean, who wouldn't be? My heart goes out to Elizabeth Marks. She devoted herself to her country only to be handed an award by a phony. Harry can't outsmart anyone. He's trying to show off his connection to the royal family, even though he betrayed them all. It's hypocritical of him to wear those medals when he openly attacked his family, the monarchy, and even his country. He shouldn't wear them at all, especially since they're not even military medals. They're from the late Queen's Silver Jubilee. 
One was for being in the Commonwealth, and he shouldn't wear them in the U.S. Harry probably got this award because of his involvement in Invictus. So wearing those medals was just a sad attempt to impress wounded veterans. Let's not forget he didn't do much in Afghanistan. He was mostly in a safe area and even skipped a memorial service for Marines to go to a movie premiere. He's turned Invictus into a fashion show for Meghan Markle, his self-centered wife. Plus, he quit the military because he couldn't get the rank he wanted. What a pitiful story. And where was Megan? Busy making jam. Laugh surprised she didn't rush in to give him another medal. Both of them have ruined Invictus, which used to be a great organization. Sure, Harry can technically wear those medals, but why? He doesn't have much to be proud of anyway. Many historical figures aren't as boastful as him. He was just an ordinary soldier, nothing special. Basically a toy soldier who's impressed by that. He was protected and played video games all day. He even failed the helicopter pilot's test three times. None of those medals were for bravery or exceptional service. He just happened to be there. So full of himself, yet he's congratulating someone who truly deserves it, a genuine soldier who's shown bravery, dignity, and determination time and time again. It's embarrassing how Harry flaunts his one military participation medal. Without his family pulling some strings, he wouldn't have even made it into Sandhurst. He's a joke. Maybe he should get more medals like the Bunker Boy or Royal Idiot Royal Traitor and Liar indeed. I remember when Harry used to be happy. Just look at him now. He seems so different. He doesn't look well at all. His appearance is really concerning. He looks unkempt and unhappy all the time. Remember when he was with Chelsea Davy? He seemed so cheerful and content. Always smiling, always laughing. But now he just looks miserable. He looks dark, almost angry. Harry's downfall really started when he married that self-centered woman. And now he's hit rock bottom and it's his own doing. Their terrible behavior has made Harry especially unpopular. He'll never regain his former popularity. That ship has sailed. He's finished. Harry and Meghan have landed themselves in quite a mess, but it's all their own doing. Harry really needs to rethink his PR team. Are they really helping him? Maybe he should dial back on those flashy videos showcasing his awards, no matter how deserving they may be. Instead, he should take some genuine steps to improve his image. And let's not forget how disrespectful they were to the late queen, especially that mocking curtsy incident. Sure, he can wear one medal, but morally he has no right to wear the other three. This incident is incredibly insulting and just proves that he's turned his back on his own country and even the queen. He's out there giving awards to American heroes. And this isn't the first time we've seen such behavior from Harry and Meghan. Remember that awful red dress incident parading around like they were the ones up for nomination? Harry is a prime example of stolen valor. He never actually served as an Apache helicopter pilot, let alone killed any Taliban members like they were mere chess pieces. And his lack of respect for wounded veterans is evident in how he demands money and perks from Invictus. And being saluted at Pearl Harbor... What was that about? Harry is no role model. There's absolutely nothing about him that deserves celebration. He's a liar, a hypocrite, and a disgrace to his family. Every time I see his face, I feel nothing but disgust. Most of the time Harry spent in Afghanistan, he was sitting in a bunker playing video games. And when he wasn't doing that, he was probably undergoing training on how to respond to incoming bombs. His medals were mostly handed to him because of his royal status. And if we're questioning the truthfulness of his claim about using drugs, then it's safe to assume that his comment about killing Taliban members like chess pieces was completely fabricated. Let's take a closer look at the medals Harry received. The Queen awarded him a genuine honor for his piloting skills, as he was indeed a pilot. He also earned the Double Diamond Award for Excellence and flew fixed-wing jet aircraft. However, due to his position in line for the throne, he couldn't engage in combat like his brother William did. William, as an air and sea rescue pilot, faced some dangerous situations. Harry, on the other hand, was limited to training as a co-pilot or gunner and was never allowed to fly a helicopter solo. Unfortunately, Harry isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. He had to leave the army because they couldn't give him any real responsibility due to safety concerns. He struggled to pass exams even back in prep school where he was held back a year and still couldn't keep up. His image was carefully crafted by the palace. Without his royal status, he wouldn't have even made it into Sandhurst. The medal he received was basically just for showing up. He didn't even complete full tours. They called him Bunker Harry because that's where he spent most of his time. 
The other medals are Jubilee medals given to him after he left the military. He might be an idiot, but he's decided he's American now. He lives in the U.S., his wife is American, and his kids are, well, invisible, but assumedly American, too. And as for taxes, who knows? So, Harry, please stop making a fool of yourself. Don't try to associate yourself with Britain anymore because you're finished. Another question I have is why Harry even showed up at this ceremony. Why did he give a speech? I suppose he was invited, but the big question is why they still wanted him there after everything he's done. Doesn't he still have someone protecting him? Could that be his father? Did you know that Lady C made some surprising revelations about King Charles being so lenient with Harry? She talked about it in her recent interviews with YouTubers, Pina and Dan Wooten. She discussed the sensitive topic of Harry not being quite right when he was born. Now, we should handle this subject delicately without offending or ridiculing families dealing with special needs. But many have noticed Harry's noticeable decline in physical appearance, facial features, and strange body language. It all became apparent after he got together with Meghan again. Lady C is discussing King Charles's fear and panic regarding a developmental issue or defect that Harry may have suffered while in utero during Princess Diana's pregnancy. According to her, there are lasting effects of this damage, which could explain Harry's behavior and reputation being protected for so long. She suggests that Harry has always been this way, and concerns have been raised about whether Diana's eating disorder during her pregnancy impacted Harry's brain development and thought processes. She's not trying to shame Diana for her struggles. Rather, she's highlighting the physiological changes in Harry that have been observed. There's something clearly wrong with him. Medical characteristics and facial features, such as his eyes and ears, have become more pronounced over time, indicating a potential underlying medical issue independent of drug abuse or bullying. Harry has admitted to facing bullying thanks to Meghan Markle's influence. There are several factors that can hinder natural brain development during pregnancy, and in many cases, the medical community struggles to understand why these phenomena occur. Even with modern medicine, there's still a lot we don't know about the causes, cures, and treatments for complex diseases like cancer and blood disorders. Development and birth can sometimes be beyond our control or comprehension. Despite remarkable advances in medical technology, there's still much research to be done. Vital organs like the brain can develop abnormally, resulting in what we commonly call birth defects. Moreover, Harry also struggles with addiction. Substance abuse in his everyday life likely exacerbates his challenges. Addiction is a serious disease, and perhaps his awareness of his lower intellect or a sense that something is wrong with him compared to his brother and peers has driven him to substance use. Maybe he's trying to numb the pain or emotions associated with feeling different from everyone else. Even Harry himself has acknowledged that having superior or average cognitive function has never been his strong suit. Throughout his life, he's struggled with reading and other aspects of intelligence. Of course, intelligence is relative, and individuals with learning or intellectual disabilities can still improve their brain function through various means like reading, education, games, puzzles, life experiences, and therapy. However, what's detrimental to brain development are drugs and violent computer games, both of which Harry seems to enjoy. Clinical studies have shown that drugs and violent games can diminish brain function and alter brain cells and their firing functions. It's been reported that Harry spends a lot of time playing violent computer games, even from his days in the bunker until now, often playing all night. Gaming itself can become an addiction, and game designers intentionally incorporate addictive elements to keep players hooked. It's concerning stuff indeed. When we consider Harry's self-admitted battles with mental health and self-esteem, it's like a perfect storm. Like many others, Harry has faced anxiety, depression, and struggles with controlling his feelings. He admits to having poor impulse control and anger issues, which can impair his judgment. That's why his reactions to perceived slights often seem exaggerated. In her new edition, Lady C points out that structured environments like the military protocols and practices Harry learned in the army have been beneficial to him. They provided him with a sense of purpose, self-esteem, and confidence. Most people thrive with structure and routine, whether it's through a job, passion, or hobby, as it gives them a reason to get up in the morning. However, in Montecito, Harry lacks consistent, sustained structure responsibility. When he was a working royal, he had that structure, but he and Meghan chose to leave. Lady C also suggests that Harry's challenges from birth have made it difficult for King Charles to discipline him. Charles feels sorry for Harry, and even some members of Parliament want him to take action, but he's hesitant, fearing he might worsen the situation with Harry and Meghan. 
Lady C implies on her YouTube channel that Charles is afraid Harry might harm himself or that more racial slurs might be directed at the royal family. However, the truth is that Charles and Catherine have already been accused of racism without any credible evidence. So there's little left to lose by taking action against Harry. Lady C doesn't hold out much hope for Harry to change his ways she believes he's been brainwashed and isolated from his friends and family. Meghan, Markle, and Doria reinforce his delusions and paranoia, possibly exacerbated by the drugs they might be giving him. Because Harry might have been born with a problem, he faced challenges from the start. King Charles noticed this too. He's been trying to support Harry. The king believes Harry's mistakes and their sad results happened because of this problem since birth. It's like Harry's mind is stuck. He can't control himself or understand everything. Charles is being patient and understanding with him. Harry might not realize the consequences of his actions. It's tough for him. I think people like Meghan, who are selfish, make things hard for victims like Harry. It feels like whatever Harry does, he's in trouble. People talk about William needing to be better, but it's not fair. Honestly, think about it. If Harry and Meghan lose their titles and their kids lose theirs too, what will they do? They'll play the victim card again, shouting racism to anyone who will listen. That's their move. So, the royals think it's best to just ignore them, let them dig their own hole. They could give prince and princess titles to the invisible children ahead of time, putting pressure on the palace. If the kids don't get those titles, even though they live and grow up in the USA, it would look bad, like they're being treated unfairly. I get why the royal family is in a tough spot. Harry faces a daily struggle with narcissism and active addiction, which affect his judgment. His mood swings make him his own victim. Meghan has influenced him greatly, teaching him her ways to fulfill her desires for power. It's possible Harry has had a brain defect since birth, making his life tough and leading to destructive behavior towards others and himself. A developmental brain issue present at birth, hard to detect, can worsen over time. Eventually, it becomes hard to hide its effects, which might be what's happening with Harry now. It's truly sad. Harry had the chance to continue doing a lot of good as a royal. Instead, he and Meghan wasted many great opportunities. Rather than helping people, he turned to drugs. Meghan's influence led to a decline in his confidence and emotional growth. He's also struggling with delusions and paranoia. These are the real issues Harry faces, not just despair. Thank you for watching this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the topics we discussed. Please comment below and share with us. And don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Goodbye for now, and I'll see you again soon in other videos on the King YouTube channel.